Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where I cover nostalgic, obscure, otherwise strange content. Today, uh, we are returning to the Twilight Zone. Um, last month, I think it was, I did a video about an episode of the Twilight Zone that bared resemblances to The Good Place, um, and I just wanted to talk about it because I love The Twilight Zone, I love The Good Place. And during that um, video, I mentioned this episode, which is called uh, The Fever. It's season one, episode 17, and it is the slot machine episode. <laughs> uh, you guys know that I love Twilight Zone, and if you don't, I'm telling you now, hey, I love the Twilight Zone. And I mentioned in the last video that I would cover more episodes because so many great episodes of the show exist, and you know, here we are. So <laughs> we're just gonna jump right in because the episode is very bizarre. I can't tell if when I put this video out, everybody's gonna be like, yes, I love this episode, this is an iconic episode. Um, or if people are gonna be like, I had no idea this episode existed, they never list this on like the top 25 best episodes. And there might be a reason for that, but um... Franklin. We will, we will hold judgment for later on in the episode. The judgment is always dispersed, but we, we give it time. <laughs> Let's just jump right in. There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. I want to say before we get any deeper in, uh, you know, we've had the same Twilight Zone intro for pretty much the entire show, um, but the famous sequence of the intro with like the eye and everything like floating through space, which is what I always associate with the show, doesn't happen until later on in the five season run. Also, isn't it weird that Twilight Zone only had five seasons? It feels like it should be more than that. Like it was like over 150 episodes, I think, or something around there, maybe 130. Anyway, a lot of episodes, but not a lot of seasons, and it feels like it should have gotten more. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. I think I read somewhere that it got canceled because they couldn't justify the costs of episodes, which is really dumb looking back on like how classic the show is. <laughs> So we start off in Las Vegas. Hollywood. It sounds like that, but it also sounds like the theme song for the Flintstones. <laughs> Just thought I'd point that out. Mr. and Mrs. Gibbs. Well, you make us feel important. You are important. So this couple is the, the two main characters. The wife has won this vacation. It isn't every day that we entertain celebrated contest winners. Maybe every other day. <laughs> yeah, so they want a radio contest, I believe, so they're in Las Vegas. Sin City. Other nicknames for Las Vegas. There's probably another one, right? I brought along our hotel photographer to take a picture of you and Mr. Gibbs for your hometown paper. The news is that they're in Las Vegas? That's a slow news day. The Elgin Bugle. That's our hometown paper. The 1960s version of your your friends on Facebook posting their pictures of vacation to make everybody jealous was opening up the paper to see that a photographer has posted a picture of your neighbor on vacation to make you feel jealous. There's a prize in their package neither expected nor bargained for. What's gonna happen to him, Rod Serling? Can't you just let two people be happy for once? In just a moment, one of them will succumb to an illness worse than any virus can produce. So this episode is Rod Serling's uh, commentary on gambling addiction, a very serious topic that gets handled in a very bizarre way in this episode. Oh, Franklin, try to enjoy it, won't you? So Mrs. Gibbs is very excited to be on this trip. Mr. Gibbs is kind of a gloomy Gus. He does not like gambling. He doesn't really like having fun, I don't think. You know perfectly well how I feel about gambling. Oh, well, this is different, though. Yeah, it's just like grown-up Chuck E. Cheese. Or maybe Chuck E. Cheese is the kid version of a casino. I can't tell. Someone else be the judge of that. This is your vacation, floor. You won it. It's a miserable, terrible waste of time. I hope you have fun today, honey. But remember, I will resent you for this for the rest of our lives. I think that's what he just said. I won! Ah, oh, it's so loud when someone wins a jackpot. I won the jackpot! I won! I don't think my reaction was the reaction that I'm supposed to have to a jackpot winning. I won! I won! So, someone just won $1,000 on a slot machine back in 1960 that was worth a lot more than $1,000. And so Flora, Mrs. Gibbs, is very excited to try her own luck. 
as we all would be, I guess. Just what do you think you're doing? Jeez, and her husband Franklin just physically removes her from the machine. Only a nickel machine. And he's like, what are you doing, woman? Why don't you just take handfuls of nickels and throw them out into the street? Women should be allowed to gamble. I think he doesn't think anybody should be allowed to gamble, to be fair to Franklin. But now you're spending money. But it's just the one nickel, Franklin. You have unlimited credit. <laughs> they were told that they had unlimited credit. I guess that doesn't mean gambling. But what is the credit for in a gambling hall? Do people still call them gambling halls? I feel like, I feel like that's something that no one says anymore. Anyway. It's quite obvious to me that you are not mature enough please. to- Franklin, please. Good God, Franklin is kind of the worst right now. So this poor woman's husband is yelling at her for just wanting to like have fun on vacation. I won't play, I promise you. Yelling at her over a nickel, which even considering inflation should not be an amount of money to yell at somebody over. The nickel's already in. And then she reminds him that the nickel is already in the machine, so like, you might as well try your luck anyway. I feel like if you're in Vegas, you've gotta like, play a slot machine one time, right? I'm not very lucky, am I? And just the one time, at least, to get the experience. I'm going back to the room. So I think in the last Twilight Zone video that I did, this episode came up, if I'm remembering correctly, because there was a gambling sequence. I said it reminded me of this episode. And I think literally these machines are the same slot machines that they used one of in that other episode. Because I don't understand, like, they wouldn't have had any reason to use different ones, I don't think. The show didn't have a monumental budget back then. I'll have to reference that other episode and see. You try it, huh? So this other man has gotten cartoonishly drunk trying to beat this one specific slot machine. Here, you play it. And he tells Franklin, here, you take my nickel and try it, because I'm never gonna win. All you Hurry. have to do, look, is put it in there. Franklin's being forced to gamble against his will. Uh, I love that his wife's like, do it. Do it. Gamble. <laughs> Gambling is good. <laughs> this type of winning stresses me out, because if he wins, there's just gonna be nickels pouring out onto the floor. So I guess he wins? You are lucky! He didn't win a jackpot, I guess. He just won, like, something. And they did come out of a, into a little tray, so I'm sorry for assuming that this was an inferior slot machine. It wasn't even my dollar. Oh. That slot machine takes dollars, I guess. The other one only took nickels. Also, we don't have a dollar coin in America anymore. When did we stop using the dollar coin? Oh, I guess technically, technically dollar coins are still usable, but like nobody uses them anymore. Anyway, I'm getting off topic, I guess. Now you'll see the difference between a normal, mature, thoughtful man and these, these wild idiots around here. So, Franklin then lectures his wife on fiscal responsibility. He's like, maha, this is what smart people do. We put this in our room and we take it home with us. They quit while they're ahead. Spoiler alert, he will not quit while he is ahead. Oh, this poor fella. Oh, he did win something. Anyway. Did you say something? What? So I think Franklin is having auditory hallucinations because he thinks the slot machine is talking to him. Well, maybe he's not. You'll see. It is the Twilight Zone after all. Franklin! Jeez, that's terrifying. <laughs> I forgot how terrifying the slot machine sounds when it talks. It sounds like a Dalek. <laughs> Now that I think about it, Daleks didn't exist yet. It was 1960, so we had a few more years before Doctor Who burst onto the scene, you know, across the pond, so. This slot machine does kind of accidentally serve as an early Dalek. <laughs> You'll see. So despite all of his big talk about being a big smart man, he's determined to double his winnings, so. He sneaks back downstairs to play the slot machine some more. <laughs> You pushed poor Loki over. He's been through enough. Franklin, is something the matter? I actually like that shot. It's kind of, it's kind of creative. Through the mirror, that's nice. This is not the kind of money I like to keep, Flora. Uh-huh. No, sure. Can... I'm going back in there and feed it back into the machine. <laughs> Get rid of what? It. Oh, Franklin, do you really think that... 
Of course. No one believes that, Franklin. It's okay. You can gamble a little. Cats can have a little salami and guys can do a little gambling, I guess. So yeah, he heads back downstairs. He leaves his wife alone in their hotel room. And you've really got to feel bad for Flora, right? Because she won this trip. She was so excited. Her husband starts yelling at her for having fun on vacation. And then he starts doing the thing that he was yelling at her about immediately. It's terribly late. Poor thing, she's just left here to be like a sad, confused beanie baby. What would a sad beanie baby look like? The little, the little blue dragon looks kind of sad. But then again, the unicorn, Heather the unicorn has, has seen some shit. It's too late, I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. All right, I'm sorry, we're getting back, we're getting back to this. I know it's late, Flora. But yeah, poor Flora. She deserves better and I feel bad for her. You stay right here, Flora. And don't let anyone else use this machine. So he won't quit. He refuses to leave. It's sort of like, um, does anybody remember the first Percy Jackson book where uh, Percy and his friends get stuck in the Lotus Hotel? The Lotus Hotel, that's what it was called, right? Yeah, yeah, and they can't, they don't know how long they've been in there. It's been like days. Yeah, it's kind of like that, but more depressing. I've got to win it back. That's how they always get you, Franklin. You've been standing here nearly three hours. I don't want to think about how much money you could put into a slot machine in three hours. I hate a shrew, Flora. Franklin is a verbal abuser, and we don't vibe with that here. The devil with people. Yeah. I'm concerned with this, this machine. No. <laughs> I could get behind your sentiment if it wasn't for this reason, Franklin. It's inhuman. Okay, dude, calm down. It's a, it's a slot machine. Every time I see a Dutch angle like that, my inclination is to just do one of these and look at it from this angle. Ooh, he was really close that time. That's so sad. Good way. I like the background noise of the one guy going, he. <laughs> he won something. He was really happy about it. Five hours. That's how long he's been there. Does anybody, has anybody ever worked in a casino? Is it depressing or is it fun? It could probably be either. I've never worked in a casino, I wouldn't know. So now we see a very anxiety-inducing montage where Franklin keeps playing and keeps losing over and over again. A lot of these episodes of The Twilight Zone, especially the early ones, you really have to give them credit because a lot of them were bottle episodes and you don't even really think about it. Like they were really good at making their budget stretch, especially since they were doing such experimental TV. What time is it, Flora? It's eight o'clock in the morning, Frank. So after staying up all night, Franklin literally breaks the machine. The machine will not play anymore. So now the man is fist fighting with an inanimate object. So this vacation has become very unfun for all involved. It was ready to pay off and it deliberately broke down so it wouldn't have to. Yeah, I think we're giving a little too much credence to the machine, Franklin. That monster, that thief. Right when we think things cannot get any worse. Franklin. The Dalek slot machine is back. Dalek slot machine would be a great name for a band. How many fictional band names have I come up with over the course of this entire channel? I could go back and watch all the videos, but I don't have time for that or the will to watch myself on camera for nearly that long. Someone else go through and tally them all up and let me know. Ooh, maybe if I compile a list of all the best fictional band names that I've come up with, maybe we could start making like merch one day that has like all of the, like it's like a band t-shirt for a band that doesn't exist. We could just confuse everybody. <laughs> Now, in a disturbing twist of events, the slot machine is now sentient and rolling towards him slowly. <laughs> ominously. Did I just say the word ominously? I don't know what I said, but it wasn't what I just said right there. Anyway. It's, it's chasing me. So with the machine ominously rolling towards him, it apparently can also open doors. That's terrifying. Like the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. It's trying to get me, Flora. There's nothing there, Franklin. There's nothing there. That's what I just said, Franklin. You know, the more times I say his name, Franklin, I'm just picturing uh, the, the beloved animated turtle, <laughs> you know, from the from the acclaimed book series. That Franklin never dealt with gambling addiction though. I love this very chill music as this man is having a mental breakdown. God bless. 
music does not match the tone at all. <laughs> oh, don't go. Don't back up anymore. There's a window, Franklin. Franklin! Franklin, no! Trigger warning for unaliving. The man falls out the window and after some very bad sound engineering... <laughs> he is no longer with us. It's very dark. <laughs> Poor Flora, I just feel so bad for her. His wife said he hadn't slept for 24 hours. That's right. I've seen a lot of them get hooked before, but never like him. They're like, we see people lose their grip on reality every day. We hate our jobs. All right, everybody, let's get back to bed. Show's over. And everybody just walks away and leaves poor Franklin there. Disrespectful. <laughs> And there's the sentient slot machine to mock him, even in death. Mr. Franklin Gibbs, visitor to Las Vegas. I would love to see them trying to pitch this episode. So the man, he, he dies at the hands of a slot machine. Oh, you mean like it's a metaphor? No, I mean it, it's a real sentient slot machine, I think. A monster with a will all its own. For our purposes, we'll stick with the latter definition because we're in the twilight zone. And that's how the episode ends. That's the end of the episode. Isn't that bizarre? I love the Twilight Zone because they're, you know, they t tackle such difficult topics, but sometimes they tackle them in a way that's like, here's a really deep metaphor, right? Here's a really deep metaphor disguised as a sci-fi drama, and we're going to make you think about things in a different way. And sometimes they're just like, Dalek slot machine, gambling bad. <laughs> Maybe there really is a deeper meaning to this episode, and I'm just not on the mental level to, like, see it. I don't know. You can tell me in the comment section. Do you know this episode? Do you like this episode? What do you think? Because I brought it up briefly in the last Twilight Zone video I did, and everybody asked... Well, not everybody. That's an exaggeration. Several people asked to cover... Well, several people. That's an exaggeration. <laughs> At least two people asked me to cover that episode. And I also wanted to cover it. I'm the third person, I guess. But people wanted to see this episode after I brought it up, because more than just me remembered it. So here it is. I've, I've brought it up in its full entirety. What do we think? But yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing. Everything you do to support this channel means the world to me. If you have an episode of the original Twilight Zone that you would like me to cover in a future video, let me know because I very much enjoy making videos about the Twilight Zone. I love talking about the Twilight Zone. It is an intense hyperfixation for me, so... I'd love to cover more episodes. But anyway, if you're new here and you're a fan of nonsense, maybe consider sticking around because I post nonsense all the time. And remember, my name is Avery. I'm a YouTuber if you say so, because thanks to you guys, this is technically a YouTube channel. Bye!